Hey, so how do you think the brain works? And where does intelligence come from? And how do we evolve to think about the way we do? And so if you're interested in answering those questions and you're still undecided about your major, this video is for you. Hi, Education Monsters! My name is Aureli and today I'm going to share with you what I've learned from my neuroscience major. So what it's like studying in neuroscience. And when I was in school, I majored in neuroscience and in psychology. And neuroscience was a pretty new, hot and sexy field. People either chose between biology and psychology. So it was only in grad school that you could join a neuroscience lab. That was like back then. But like nowadays, universities are developing neuroscience bachelor's degree. And I was just lucky to be in one of them. So when you get into neuroscience, you can study so many different things like ranging from clinical studies with patients to computational neuroscience where you're working with programming and simulations you can also work in a lab in vivo with rodents dogs pigs hamster and bats or you could also work in vitro with cells and viruses so if neuroscience is so many things what is neuroscience like i mentioned before neuroscience is the perfect mix between biology and psychology it's the science of how we think, and more precisely, how does the brain and the nervous system work? So if you come from the psychology side, you might want to study like the science of emotions, infant and child development, addiction, intelligence, learning, and even crazy fun topics like language, neuroethics, or neuroeconomics, to see what influences buyers and consumers in everyday life. So if you're leaning more into the biology side, there's many options, including neurophysiology, neuroanatomy, neurological diseases, and you can also study a particular neurotransmitter and maybe see the effect of a drug onto a brain. There are two different branches called pharmacokinetic and pharmacodynamics. So pharmacokinetics is the study of the fate of substances like absorption, distribution, excretion, like for a drug, a food, a cosmetic given to an organism. And pharmacodynamic, it's literally what a drug does to a body and what are the biochemical and physiological changes onto the body and what else can i study on the side so if you're in school it's always wise to think ahead but don't overthink it so in north america we have this luxury of choosing multiple majors and combining it with minors that aren't even related and people might think oh it's great if i can study neuroscience I can also double major in psychology or biology, and I could possibly do a minor in computer science or linguistics and all of these options. They're awesome. But I would just say like, go with what you enjoy and what comes easily to you. And I know in North America, we have this pressure to perform and to be the best and not just be the best, but to be better than anyone else. So you're comparing yourself all the time to others and it's exhausting always trying to get ahead and creating like a more unique profile than your neighbor. So like really think about what you want because your passion is your drive, not the self image and not being a people pleaser. So at the end of the day, you can combine your neuroscience major with something else, but you're working on your career and it's supposed to be what makes you happy. And worst case scenario, you can always switch your major. It's not like, nobody's done it another thing is get experience so when you're in school and exploring your options make sure to get your feet wet and actually no matter what get experience before graduating whether it be an internship at a pharmaceutical company volunteering in an academic lab volunteering at the hospital or at the association for patients with alzheimer's disease or parkinson's disease and this will help you not only grow as a human being but it would also help you figure out where to go. And you'll learn if you want to prefer like working around patients or mice or rats or alone in the computer lab, I don't know. The only way to know is if you try it out. And being in college, that's the perfect time for you to start applying and just like discover uh, what you've learned in class to apply that in real life situations. So when people ask me about the neuroscience major, they're also asking about the career options and what are the career options realistically? Because neuroscience opens up a lot of career options, but maybe too many. So young students often have this romantic idea of working in a lab and being truly passionate about research. And they think about becoming a PI and being in a room full of floating brains in jars. 
And it's not like this, at least not for everyone. So during my undergrad, I volunteered in several labs and I loved the rotation because it allowed me to discover what I didn't like. I worked with mice and rats and I learned to perform brain surgery. I got into behavioral research and neurodegenerative diseases. And I love, I liked it. But I also worked with stem cells. Yeah, that was cool. That was badass. I, and of course I've had enough of the lab. I know I needed to explore working with humans because I felt like I was too sociable to stay in the lab all weekend talking to my mice. Here's what I've learned. You can be friends with a mouse, but the mouse will not be your friend. After my master's, I've gotten a job in clinical research at a hospital and I was able to conduct studies involving patients and being the liaison between surgeons, medical students and patients. It was like super great. It was like the perfect, it, it was like the perfect mix between science and having social contact and also think outside the box because there's a lot of neuroscience graduate who go travel the world and they can study human behavior across culture and they team up with psychologists psychiatrists to sociologists and they're just living the best life so you can do that too and you can also become a consultant and live your passion for business and this is interesting because i've also applied to become a real-time trader at an investment company and I went to a group interview and I was the only one who didn't have an MBA. And so the people actually liked my profile for my neuroscience and analytic background. So take advantage of it, especially if you're in North America because you're not stuck with your major. Which leads to my next point. If you're a multidisciplinary, you're the most badass and unstoppable human being ever. And my biggest mistake when I studied in school was that I thought that I would study to become a neuroscientist, like a scientist doing science? And here's the thing, you are, but you're not just a scientist. You need to prepare yourself to wear 10,000 hats at your job. For example, if you work in a lab, like prepare yourself to learn about other science fields like chemistry and physics, and you, you'll also learn like lab safety and tight regulations. If you have to use viruses, you might want to inform yourself on infectiology for your own good. So get yourself ready for statistics and computer science when you're going to do your analysis. And you better hone those writing skills for when you're ready to publish. You also have to play politics with journals and editors to get your paper out there in the best journals and you'll help writing grants and you'll, you might also need to promote yourself during social events. Like if you have the chance to go to conferences, especially if you want to go further in your career in academia. And of course, my favorite you have to wear the teacher hat because you can train your summer interns and other undergrads or med students coming into your lab. So you'll learn to present at lab meetings and conference, so be prepared to be a public speaker. You better show confidence. So for people whose native language is in English, like including me, they better overcome the extra step of explaining their research in English. And I'm convinced that being adaptable, no matter where you come from, is the highest sign of intelligence. So here's my last point. If you want to major, I mean in anything, I guess, you have to build your network early. And the best place that I found was LinkedIn. And don't hesitate to add friends and professional friends who went to the same school as you, classmates, professors, people who share the same interest as you. And if there's a company that you wanna work for, try to reach out to those people who work there and don't be shy. Shoot a message and ask for a phone conversation. And I've tried to ask for coffee multiple times and it usually works less well because people are busy. So they're usually less keen to give you time. There's one exception. Someone contacted me on LinkedIn regarding my experience in pharmaceutical companies in Boston. And we met at a coffee shop and I trusted that it was a real profile. Like the guy went to the same university as me and we talked for a while and I pulled out all my connections all the headhunters that I knew in the area and also my old co-workers and he got a job in Boston and everyone was happy and then the funny thing listen to this but a year later I was looking for a job and I also happened to be in Boston visiting so I contacted my this guy my old friend to see if everything went well and guess what this is like pure karma I kid you not but he just got me a job in Montreal so don't ever underestimate your connection and always take a chance reaching out to people. You don't lose anything. And the worst thing that can happen is that people don't respond or they just politely decline. 
but you can gain so much more with just a lucky message. So here's the conclusion. Studying neuroscience is more accessible than before, so consider this fun major. It's really, really fun. So there are so many subcategories if you want to study neuroscience, so don't be shy and get experience and exposure to learn what you like and what you don't like. Career options are so numerous, so don't worry about a job yet, because what makes you valuable and marketable is if you're multidisciplinary and adaptable. So people would rather hire somebody with potential than someone set in stone with experience who doesn't want to learn. So make sure that you come off um, very flexible on your profile when you're applying for things. And also build your network as soon as you can because it's important to get your LinkedIn going on and to build your credibility with a strong profile as soon as you can. Well, I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you're gonna have fun with your new neuroscience degree. Bye!